Hello, everyone, and thank you for coming back to more recaps and reviews on The Bold and the Beautiful. We're going to go over the one that aired on Friday, October 14, 2016. Y'all, it was a boring episode today. I just wanted to throw Steffi and Liam off the cliff myself. To just break away from all the dryness of their relationship trying to take flight again. I'm like, oh, can we get the air traffic controllers out there on the runway and just flag them as a no-fly zone? Okay, they can't even get in the cockpit to start taking off for their new adventure together. Because oh, we just have turbulence in the air. So we don't want to have them on nobody's flight radar, okay? Basically, we have Liam and Steffi or at his beach house. She's telling Liam she got to think of herself now and her family. She's telling Liam her and why are over. I'm like, wait a minute, Steffi. Haven't you been thinking about yourself for the longest through all your relationships? You don't think about anybody else. Woo, I wish her character get rolled off quick, fast, and in a hurry. I am just tired of her antics. Not her as the actress, but just as her character. I mean, she, it, her character has no morals, no scruples, no morality, nothing. I mean, she's just like a plain robot with no feelings. I just can't take her character anymore. They need to revamp and give her another storyline. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. Okay? Anyway, we go to Rick Thorne, I'm sorry, Rick and Thomas Brooke and Carter. They're all listening to Rich, telling everyone in the room, he lied. Yes, he lied about having power of attorney over his father, Eric Estate. Everybody looking at him like he's crazy. Even Brooke looks at him with little love. She's shocked, or it appears that she's shocked. With a rigid announcement of lies and deceit. Once again. Okay. Then we have Zenday. Zenday is telling Nicole to don't have another baby for Rick and Maya. Let them fend for themselves. Let them try other ways, other avenues to get a little brother, sister for Lizzie. Or hell, just be glad they have Lizzie in the world. Okay. It's a lot of children grow up. You know, by themselves and they have to fend for themselves and have friends or relatives such as cousins to play with. They Sometimes they just don't have that option and the parents don't even have the thought to have another child. You know what I'm saying? You never know what the mother had to go through to bring that one special child in the world. And like I said, Maya and Rick have just been selfish. They have too much resources to definitely give Lizzie another brother and sister without taking up Nicole's precious time as being a human being and having a life to deal with issues on her own that she wants to start. I mean, come on. Ugh. That storyline in my book is dead as well. Um, then we go to, you know, pretty much Zenday is shutting her down. He don't really want to hear about her taking any more of her life to, um, give to Rick and Maya when they have wealth and they have, you know, power in the community. They can go and adopt any child they want. I mean, come on. This is too much. And he's really telling her, you shouldn't even try to use your body that way. Oh, the rationalization the both of them are going through is just uh, agonizing is the word. Okay, we leave that situation. We go back to Rick. Rick is furious about the news, meaning the news uh, about Rich not really having power of returning and not being truthful and coming forth with what was really the truth. So they can understand the situation a little bit better and they can all collectively think of something else that can kind of keep Queen at bay. But definitely not doing something that's going to pretty much put Eric back in the same situation he's fighting so desperately to get out of because of lies. Lies being told against and on Queen. And uh, Brooke and Thomas and Rick pretty much really gets into Ridge's ass about it. Then we have Steffi admits everything to Liam about lying 
being deceitful about Quinn and them having power of attorney, meaning her father Rich having power of attorney and them using it uh, against Quinn. When in actuality, Quinn is the one who had power of attorney and if it wasn't for Wyatt sticking his nose in and getting involved and just holding the secret to keep Quinn at bay, they wouldn't be in this situation and she wouldn't be filing for separation uh what do you call it? Separation procedures also going towards divorce proceedings or an annulment. I'm like, Stephanie, y'all have definitely been together too long to get an annulment, nut hole. But anyway, we're going to let her go and do and say whatever she wants to to whoever she wants to listen to her and that mess she's spewing out of her mouth. Okay, we go to commercial. We come back. We have Nicole and Zenday still talking about Nicole starting another baby process for Maya and Rick. However, she realizes she, should, she shouldn't be at their beck and call. They really should not be asking her to do this. And then Zenday just throws in there, what if your mother and father think about it? I don't think they would support uh, Maya and Rick taking up your time again to say they want a baby, another baby, another playmate for... Um, Lizzie, and she somewhat agreed, but she still feels some kind of way. Personally, I think Nicole need to have some psychiatric uh, treatment, some counseling, because something is just not going all the way up to the top floor in her thinking process. That's just my thoughts. Okay, one time was a very humanitarian type thing. That she could possibly give to another human being is priceless. But to continue to do it at her sister and her brother's law beck and call, that's a bit much. And she should see it. I mean, if you want to be a mother, then have Zenday's baby. Y'all get married. Put that plug in and see how he's going to chew on that little piece of information. But to just, ah, uh, let's just go on for that because that's kind of much getting me upset. Okay, with all her foolishness. And her thinking patterns. But anyway, we go to Brooke, Brooke and Rick getting on Rick still about lying about having the power of attorney. They're all trying to figure it out with Carter being at the table. What kind of logistic things they could do legally to keep Quinn at bay. And they could try to stop some of her activity when it's regards to the family fortune, uh, their father's uh medical health issues, decisions being made, things of that nature. And of course, they're all just in the water, drowning very deeply, and Carter can't really save them because Quinn hasn't really broken any laws or shown any type of dysfunction that she cannot carry out her power of attorney duties, if you get my drip. Anyway, we move on to that situation. We go to Steph, and Steph is trying to play up Liam. I'm like, oh, battered scene, okay? She is so stupid self-centered she is such the ultimate manipulator but she still is wearing wyatt's engagement ring she still has wyatt's tattoo okay what about the tattoo ring steffi i wish the writers replaced steffi's character altogether i'm just tired of it period this double standard in this storyline. We go to commercial, we come back, we have Zenday. He finally gets Nicole to stop thinking about giving Maya and Rick another baby. We go to Thomas. Thomas is saying, poor Steffi. Why poor Steffi? She's getting whatever and however what she wants, okay? She got um, Wyatt, okay? Then she turned around, threw Wyatt back to the shawls and won't Liam. So she got Liam. Next week, it'll be some other gentleman, some other poor soul that she would get, you know, in the sheets with and claims her prize on the new catch of the day. I'm sick of the storyline they have Steffi's playing or Steffi's character. Okay, we go to Brooke. Brooke knows she shouldn't be saying one word. Not even a syllable of one word. Not even a hume of a word when it comes to talking about Queen. I mean, did she not forget? She just got into a situation with her sister's husband. Fooling around with him. Kissing on him. Embracing him. I mean, all this, you know, 
hypocrisy going on. I'm like, how can you blame Quinn and you sat up there and took your sister's husband from her? Okay. Did that feel good? I don't think it was. It wasn't good for Katie, but she's a rich woman right now, so she can do whatever she want to do. Okay. And now you're looking at the situation where you were doing something to help Rich out. Now Rich don't really need you to get married to Bill. So what are you going to do? Is he going to pan out his love or what he feels about you? Or he's just going to leave you in the dust to marry old Bill? Boom, he was just a plaything. Katie tried to tell Bill it's just a plaything. But he's going to find out sooner rather than later. Okay, then we go to Liam. Liam and Steffi are trying to make sense of their lives now. Now, Steffi is trying to protect her grandfather. I'm like, okay, Wyatt, you may Wyatt try to protect you by having Quinn out, out your life. That didn't work. Quinn is still in your grandfather's life. He don't give a crap about what you think he should be doing. But Quinn is still in your life. But you said the only reason you would leave Wyatt is... If he could get Quinn out your life. Well, Steffi, he's still in your life because you can't get rid of your grandfather, sweetie. He done married to you. He don't owe you anything. Okay? So how does that really play out? It doesn't. Hypocrisy is a bitch. Okay? Anyway, we go back. Oh, Steffi is still trying to play mind games with Liam. Talking about she believes in them now, too. Well, you didn't believe in them before when he was trying to get you. Really, when he was trying to get you not to marry Wyatt. But you went on and did what you had to do. We go to commercial. We come back. We go to Zenday and Nicole talking about adopting procedures. Something Maya and Rick should be thinking about. Instead of using her as a surrogate, a surrogate now and then and even future later. Okay? He like, let's not even entertain that anymore. I need you to be worried about me, my feelings, me, myself, and I. Okay? I'm like, no, you're not a slave to Zen Day too. I mean, really. Nicole, you need to get in college. You need to, you need to do something with your character, okay? Because I'm just sitting, I'm just tired of the whole element of your character. You're not a surrogate to be burp, burping out babies. That's not really what I want to see as a viewer of the show. You need to be doing something. I don't know, be a model. Be, you know, go to business school. Try to get your little edge into the company. I don't know. Do something other than sitting here trying to make babies. Okay. Anyway, moving on from there, we go to Rick, Ridge, Thomas, and Brooke. They're still trying to scheme on Queen to see where they can get her out instead of embracing her like Mr. Forster had got on all of their behinds about. Minus Brooke because he gave her a free pass the time she keep coming on in this situation. He's gonna have to get in her ass too. Okay, moving on from there. We have Ridge just talking about Steffi's happiness. But that's all Stephanie has been doing is happy moments in her life. She's never had any difficult times in her life except for the one time I could sympathize with her character. And that's when she uh had that little motorcycle accident and she lost her baby between her and Liam. But then again, Liam told her hard head behind not to get on that motorcycle while she was pregnant but she did listen she always do what she want to do so it's time for stephanie to read some of that karma you know that karma sitting around where she is affected and not having anyone so she can appreciate being by herself so she can develop herself to let her know she's a full-fledged woman she can do let her roar let her woman is roar okay oh but anyway we go to stephanie stephanie and her crying games with Liam, telling Liam she needs him, and their life bad. Liam says he would not ever give up on her. Ooh, boo-hoo, cry me a river. Moving on. Both Stephanie and Liam are crazy. They're kissing on each other. She is not legally free to be doing all of the things that she's doing with him, embracing him lovingly and all this. Such an adulterous scene we got going on here. She is still wearing Wyatt's ring. She still have the tattoo of their um, memory and uh, commitment they made to each other. I mean, couldn't you have taken the rings off, took everything that Wyatt ever gave you, materialistic, off of you if it came in the form of any type of jewelry? Couldn't you have removed your tattoo prior to or covering it up, or getting another tattoo over it or something? to um, be already ready for Liam and ready to do something with him on the spot. You could have styled for separation uh, procedures, that leading into divorce procedures, 
prior to you even going over running, telling Liam anything. But no, you're going all full-fledged straight ahead like you always do. Don't care about nobody else's feelings but your own, your own self-centeredness. And then what? I mean, come on. What well, now the writer's got to write in uh, why it has some pretty bad accident and you're going to be obligated to go back to him because uh, it's, it's too much. It's just too much. The writers need to get it taken care of. If they're going to let you go with Liam, just go on and just cut several of the course and be ha ha with it. You know what I'm saying? So they can find another love interest for Wyatt because it's just too much. It's too much openness that anything can happen. And with this storyline, it needs to end. Okay, we need to start up some new storylines, get some new uh, deceitfulness going on or betrayal but this storyline is has come to a close I'm, I'm tired of her and liam trying to get back to each other let them have each other Ooh. anyway um like i'm saying she could have just did all of this as a forethought before even telling Liam, i'm coming back to you let's start our future this that and the other I mean, it's just, uh, I, they don't want, it seems like the writers don't want her to ever have any consequences for her actions. That's all I'm saying. There's got to be some type of consequences here. All right, y'all. That was my take on the boat and the beautiful for October the 14th. And I hope you enjoy it. And I'll talk to you next episode. Thank you. Bye-bye.